What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft and today guys We're gonna be messing around with the rock melter and the obsidian factory Which actually work really well together because the rock melter is going to allow us to turn all of our extra cobblestone or netherrack into lava and then we can pump that lava straight to the obsidian factory combine it with a little bit of water and boom we have obsidian so it'll make it really easy for me to get rid of all this cobble that I'm building up in here and this is very little compared to what I'm getting from the sonic borer whenever I run it and we'll be able to turn it into something a little bit more useful which in this case is of course obsidian now the setup is relatively easy to make I am going to do a little bit to automate it so that I can put all the cobble into a chest and then just have it go straight into the machine and I'll have an on off switch for it running but other than than that it's just going to be classic steam engines powering a pump all that good stuff getting us the water and nothing else other than that so pretty much all we're going to be crafting today is going to be the actual rock melter and the obsidian factory so it's not that much uh, if we go in and click on the rock melter it's just going to be four steel ingots a reservoir a steel gear two base panels and a shaft unit so there we go on the rock melter and then if we go over to the obsidian factory Again, very cheap. Now this one is interesting because I'm not sure why, but there's actually two recipes here, one of which has steel ingots in the top left and right corners, and one of which that doesn't. And they're both identical other than that. And if we look over these, they're both obsidian factory with the same block IDs, everything else is the exact same. So I thought it was a little weird. So let's see if it works like that. Okay, so it does not work like that. If we put these in, now it works. Okay, so I don't know why that other recipe is there, but just use the one that's a little bit more expensive, the top one, and you should be good to go. Now, I do have a gasoline engine, which we're going to be using to power the rock melter. And if you want to see anything in the Rotary Craft Handbook on these, they're both going to be under production. So the first one you're going to come to on the second page is going to be the Obsidian Factory, which will mix piped in water and lava to produce obsidian. And you pretty much just don't want to leave it full of only lava for too long, but I doubt you're going to have that issue if you're constantly pumping a stream of water into it and not manually putting it in there. You should never actually run into that issue uh, unless, of course, the system fills up completely, which would be nine stacks of obsidian, which I don't think is going to happen for you. And on top of that, you can automatically pump it out. So yeah, should not be an issue. It requires power for 32 kilowatts, which we can easily get from using the shaft junction with two steam engines. The required speed is 2.048 kiloradians per second, which we can get using the steam engines and then using a four to one gearbox. Uh, maximum temperature is a thousand degrees Celsius and it can hold 30 or 320 buckets. It looks like uh, power inputs from the bottom. So we're going to be using a bevel gear for that. And then right below that is the rock melter. And you can see the, oh, let me, I want to look at the recipe for this one. Okay. So the recipe for this one, it shows both in here too. Interesting. Um, but it uses frictional heating to melt rock into lava. So you are going to get that slightly annoying noise you get from the frictional heater, which is why I want the ability to turn it off. Um, but it can be drawn out with pipes. Netherrack provides the most lava per block and cobblestone provides the least. Uh, pretty much netherrack can be cooked down at a lower temperature. I want to say it's 600 degrees Celsius, whereas cobblestone requires a thousand. And I want to say netherrack is going to get you twice as much, but we can look in that once we have this all set up. Now, if we go over, it doesn't give you any information other than the power input is in the bottom. So again, another bevel gear that we're going to use, but you do need to have at least a gasoline engine worth of power output to get it up to a thousand degrees Celsius. A steam engine would be fine if you're just going to be using netherrack, but unfortunately even two steam engines combined is only going to get it up to 960 degrees Celsius. And then the uh, temperature that's added, depending on where you are or what time of day it is, is going to not be enough to bump it up to actually being a thousand. So unfortunately you are going to have to use a gasoline engine or more for this, but that's actually not that bad because we can just turn it off using the engine, uh, engine control unit. And other than that, I just have the item pumps and some chests to actually pump in the cobblestone and store it there. Um, so we should be all good to go. That was my long winded explanation as to what we're going to be doing today. So we can come down here and I've made a little room right over here for our work today. And the main goal is going to be having the obsidian factory right here, having a lever somewhere right next to it and having a chest also right next to it where I can put the cobblestone in the lever will be to turn it off and then I can just access the obsidian factory to make sure everything is going okay. So what we're gonna have to do first is do a slightly different pump setup than usual. So I'm going to do my typical uh, pump shaft junction and DC electric engine setup to start out. And then we're going to be pumping that into another steam engine, which is then going to be working uh, for another. Also, did we, I didn't even make this. I forgot to make this. We need to make, oh my gosh, I forgot. We got to run back upstairs guys. I forgot one thing. I forgot to craft the four to one diamond gearbox that we're going to be using. 
So, there we go. Mount, diamond, and I do have the lubricant buckets, so we're, sh we're already good to go on that, but... Okay, so back down here, I'm trying to think of how I want to set this up in terms of where I want the pump to go. I think the first pump should go over here, and... Hmm... You know, we want the pumps to be right here. So the first pump will go over here, and I'll let you guys know why in a little bit. Uh, actually, this is where we're going to want the water to go. So it's going to go right there. Now, I do need to make sure to refill the buckets because the second pump setup is going to be using a 3x3 three three area. So uh, just because we're going to be running it at a much faster speed. So, yeah, we need to do... Oh, I already have all this in my inventory, but I need to put some cobblestone down right here. And we need the... DC electric engines, shaft junction, which I'm going to have to rotate, and there we go, get the pump set down, flip that, and get one of my levers out, okay, so that should be all good to go, and now what we're doing is pumping this into another, or pumping this into a steam engine, which is then going to run another pump, which is going to be using the 3x3 area, and I guess that one can be we should have enough room right over here. I also need to grab some netherrack too for these steam engines. I forgot to do that. But we should be able to put the steam engine right there. We should be able to put the pump. I think we're just using a regular pump. I don't remember if I was planning on using a... Oh, thanks, inventory tweaks. Uh, I don't know if I was planning on actually using a gearbox with these. Maybe... Oh, you know what? That's probably where I wanted to use uh, the first 4 to 1 gearbox. And then I think I need to grab another 4 to 1 gearbox upstairs. So I might actually need to rotate this around this direction. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So, just have to rotate it around this corner really quick so that we can get this input in the back and then have it going out straight. Then we have the diamond gearbox there, and i got to remember to put the lubricant in it. And then we're going to hook that up to a pump with the 3x3 three three area below it. And we got some coal down there, but that's not important right now. I don't feel like mining a whole thing of coal, so I will come back and get that later. But we can... Get all that, fill that area in. Now, the main reason I'm doing this is because at the speed we're going to be running the pump, it actually would go through a 2x2 two two area and suck up all the water eventually. It would not take long. It would probably take like 20 seconds before it goes fast enough that it gets rid of all the water before it can replenish it. Um, oh, you know what? I did actually forget a couple things. Okay, guys. So I went, I made all the stuff that we're going to need, and I was actually incorrect about a couple things for the setup that we're going to want. So we're actually not going to need a gearbox for this area over here. If we did want to use a gearbox, the best we would need would be a two to one, but I'm not actually going to use one for the steam engine to get the pump down to 0 0.05 seconds per operation. Uh, what I actually want to do is just use a stone shaft, and I think this should put it at 1.45 seconds per operation. So we'll put the pump right there, flip it a little bit, and I don't have the steam engine running yet, but I want to get, I guess we can, we can get it running now that we have water going to it. Um, but the main reason behind this is it should allow me to use just a regular 2x2 two two pool. I don't think that'll be an issue. Um, we'll be able to see really quickly if it will be an issue. But we can start this up, put some more cobblestone down there. Now we can start hooking this up to the rest of the stuff. So, yeah, we're going to be a little bit short on room here, but we can kind of wind it around if we need to. So once we have this pumping out, this is actually going to go to a lot of different stuff. So let me get, yeah, I need some cobblestone here too. So we're going to be pumping out using the liquid pipes, and then we're going to be running the liquid to two different steam engines. And then on top of that, we're going to be running the liquid to the obsidian factory itself. So the steam engines, we just need to place strategically so they're not going to intersect with this water right here and have that spill into the nether rack. So I want to say that those can come over this way so that we can start wrapping it back around a little bit. And then the obsidian factory is going to be somewhere over here, so then the water will be able to just run straight to that. And this should almost be running too. So we'll put those there, and these are going to need to go to one bevel gear and then one shaft junction and this is comp this is going to be running together to power the okay so this one's for the obsidian factory so these might actually need to be rotated a different way if i want to mine this block right here if we want the obsidian factory to be right here then we want the bevel gear to be right down here which needs to go from south to up and then that means that we need the shaft junction to be right here and let's rotate that so we do have a couple choices about how we want this to run 
I think this right here would be the best setup, and then we can pump water in from this side over here and lava from this side. So these are actually going to have to get moved uh, into a little bit of a better spot. So one there and one there. Yeah, so there we go. There we go. Or we could do... You can make this even easier for us. This is what I was planning on doing. So it's a little bit of a waste, I guess. Um, but it's actually not that bad of an issue. So we can do a bevel gear onto this, which is going to be going from south to east then. And then we can just run the water along the back like this. So that should be good. And then we can get the netherrack down there. It doesn't look like this is going to be an issue with its runtime. Yeah, so 1.45 seconds. The fastest you're going to get this is 0.05 seconds, I think, uh, which we could easily do if we threw on uh, a regular gearbox and turned it to speed. But this should be more than fast enough. Initially, I was planning on using three steam engines, in which case I wanted it to run that fast and also put water in the obsidian factory. But I think this should be fine, considering a regular pump setup is able to fit or to fuel two steam engines and then a little bit and that's running at almost three seconds per operation so yeah that should be more than enough and now we can light these and uh, break that one yeah, so we can light these on fire let them start going there's going to be nothing in there to actually run but we can verify that it's going to have enough speed for it and then we can cover these up and start worrying about the actual uh rock melter which is going to be getting us all of our lava so we need to put water in on one of these sides and we need to put lava in somewhere else. So I, if we look over here, you can say that uh, it doesn't actually tell you where to put the liquid in. So if we wanted to, we could pump one in from the back and one in from this side over here. So I think that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to need to break this torch and put the water there. And we're not going to be using up that much water for this. It's got a really big internal buffer, so it's going to take a while to fill, especially with this operation time. But uh, we're not going to be using that much at the rate that we're making the lava. So then the lava can go, I guess we'll put, we'll actually put the lava in this side and we need to figure out where we want the gasoline engine to go. And then once we figure that out, we can put the chest down and make the item pump on it. So it is getting a little cramped back here, but if we were to just throw the rock melter down, I guess we could just throw it down somewhere like right here. And then if we wanted to throw down a bevel gear right below it because you need to put the power in from the bottom so that's going to be going from north to up yeah from north to up and then we can throw down the gasoline engine and the reason i'm keeping it really close to the wall is so it's easy to get to the engine control unit for when we want to eventually turn this off so engine control unit gasoline engine i'm not going to worry about doing the redstone right now it's relatively simple for you guys if you want to do it the same way i'm pretty much just going to put redstone signal to this that's going to say if it's uh either on or not on do 100 percent uh, pretty much, if there's no signal, then I want to say it's zero. If there's a signal, 100, it might be backwards. But um, yeah, pretty much just zero and 100 because you're going to need at least 100% to get this to actually heat up to above 1,000 degrees Celsius. So you're not going to be able to go any lower than that. But um, yeah, pretty much just turn it on and off. And it's not that difficult, except in here it's a little bit cramped and there's a bunch of stuff out front. So now I think we should be good to go, except we have to get out of here, uh, assuming this is... Oh, oh gosh, I forgot that we need to put a gearbox on that. I need to put a 4 to 1 gearbox on that. Okay, so we actually do need to move these. That's my bad. Okay, so we got to get below them. It's not bad to mine down here too because we're going to have to put the nether rack back here. We just have to move this back one and that's where the 4 to 1 gearbox is going to be going. So this needs to be the nether rack right here. We can fill this in and we can break the steam engines and just move shift this whole thing back one. And then, yeah, the bevel gear can stay there. Yeah, so... I'm just going to throw down some cobble right here so I can get the steam engines down. We can re-pipe the liquid to these, yeah. And then... There's no reason for... Oh, it's irrelevant if that's going there or not. We use that one anyway. Okay. Now we're getting things cooking. So, again, shaft junction right there. Flip it around. And give me the bevel gear back. No! Okay, good. It didn't fall too far away. And it's going to be going from south to west. No, from south to east. There we go. And then we're going to be using, we should already have this 4 to 1 gearbox ready to go. And flip it around, and then that should be good. So we can get the netherrack under these lit. And I'm just going to make sure these connect. So 
Yeah, you gotta update them. So breaking one and then the other one would have been fixed. But Flint and Steel doing this one again. That was my bad, guys. I completely spaced out on that. Okay, so that should be good on that front. And if we were to throw this on, that should be working. Let's see if we can get out here if there's anything in front of us. We'll just break that. Okay, so I am going to grab some ethanol and I am going to allow this to start running just so that I can show you guys that it does heat it up to just above the required amount. And now we can actually start piping the stuff in here. So I guess it, it's kind of useless to be using the pneumatic item pump for this because we could just be using a hopper if I were to break this one block right here uh, or two hoppers. So I guess we can run upstairs and I can just grab two hoppers for this because it's kind of Oh man, I only have one hopper. Darn it. Okay. Well, I don't feel like crafting another one. So here's what I'll do. I will just throw the hopper down in here. The main reason I was using going to use the pneumatic item pump is just because I thought I'd be transporting it a further distance, but uh, that's actually not the case. So yeah, if I really wanted to, I could put the rock melter right here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to waste the ethanol. Okay. So this would get up to a thousand degrees Celsius. I'm going to do it though. I'm going to waste the ethanol and we're going to, we're going to move this just a little bit. So this would cause issues with the engine control unit. I may need to adjust that a little bit, but what we're going to do now is rock belt right here. Actually, no, we can do the engine control unit back here. It'll make the wet or the redstone wiring a little bit more annoying, but we can put that there and then we can fill this back in with cobblestone. We can throw the bevel gear down and where did the rock melter go oh it flew in here okay i was gonna say there's no way it fell in a fire anywhere and burned so south and then up and the rock melter goes right there and then the hopper goes into the rock melter and that'll give us a little bit of a buffer in terms of using uh, cobble it's not an enormous buffer if i wanted to put a chest up here i could i might do that eventually but it's not a huge issue right now so what i am going to do Let's get some more ethanol. I just wasted an entire stack, which was eh, kind of bad, but whatever. So we'll throw that in there. This will start running. It'll get up to just above a thousand degrees Celsius. It should be able to connect here and we can actually break this block and this should be, oh yeah, we got to flip this to speed and that should be, yep. So that's able to run. The buffer is full of water. These are all good to go. So this should be filling up very slowly. Yep. Looks like it is. And once this gets to a high enough temperature, which will be a thousand, it slows down a lot. So I don't know if we'll actually get there today. But one cool thing I want to show you guys is if we throw cobblestone in there, it'll slowly empty into here. It does have uh, an internal buffer of nine stacks uh, and it does have some internal room for the uh, lava. But you can see it's really cool because it actually fills up with the rocks. So this should work. What I might do is hop off camera here, allow it to heat up and then show you guys a quick clip before we call it a day, just as sort of a proof of concept that this is all working. Uh, so I guess I'll be back once this is ready. Okay guys, so we are back. The first process just ended for the rock melter. So we do have some lava in here now. You can see it barely fills up the obsidian factory and there's some residual lava left in the pipe as there always is with liquid. But you can see that the rock melter, if we can, we can get a click on it, if you can see, it's at 1,033 degrees Celsius, so it's going to sit pretty much right there. Um, and, oh gosh, I can't click on it. Okay, well, the one thing I wanted to show you, let me see if I can if I can get back there. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. No, no. Oh, do I have the skill to do it? No, okay, it's not looking like I do. Wait. Do you want to let me click on it? No, okay, so it's kind of like selecting both of them, whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it entertaining or informative, please feel free to give it a like. And I do apologize if I didn't sound as enthusiastic in today's video. I did have a very long day at work, and I wanted to come home and record, but it is kind of late, and uh, I am a little bit tired. But, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you later.